Welcome to this edition of AMPTV Now News. And AMPTV Now News, this is our second season. And as we've been bringing you information, highlighting top news items that is happening within the African American community, a lot of the sources we get uh, can be from our popular news sources, like today, we're going to be talking about a source that came out of the, our, our source being the Washington Post. But we also like to tell you about those other sources that, like Dr. Boyce Watkins from Juneteenth, you like that? Yes. The financial uh, Juneteenth? Yes, he goes into some very good details about the, the financial prospects in the African American community and how we can elevate ourselves financially. Um, and not be always desolate and, and thinking in a poverty. Well, this is going to be an interesting part because we've got a part two that we're talking about on our part one of our news topic that deals with the video that there was some angry, and this is from the Washington Post, y'all, so I don't want to be like, no, it's not from like, us. Huh? It's not from us. It says parents <laughs> outraged after students shown white guilt cartoon for Black History Month. We are still in Black History Month. Mm -hmm. We did a two-part on Dr. Carter G. Woodson, so because we wanted people to understand the business side of who he was, mm -hmm. and so that you understand that you, we aren't just. It's not just about celebrating Black History Month. It was going deeper into who he was as a person to come from a farmer, member from former slaves, and where most of the year he was just farming. And then to be able to get his own high school diploma within by studying himself mm -hmm. within a few months, two or three months, and then to turn around and get your bachelor's degree because you, you couldn't go to college the whole year, and then you get your master's degree. I wanted to show people. Well, and, and in addition to that, he, he taught or was the principal, head teacher at, at the, the school. High school yes. That he went to study it. Yeah. Now that's a, that's but he didn't really study coming. there because he was out in the fields. Yes. Okay. And his parents were former slaves, so they did push him through morale, not through education. And I think that's really deep. And so this segment is interesting about the parents that are outraged after students shown this white guilt cartoon that we'll be showing uh, here shortly after the break. I hate that it says white guilt. Hey, I this is the that's why I had to make sure people know that this is the WashingtonPost.com that quoted that, and that was their title. So I want to make sure we're very clear on that. We'll be giving you some background about that, and then the part two that we're going to be discussing is our Dr. B uh, Boyce Watkins, and that's from the Financial Juneteenth, and interesting that his title of his video is, Dear Black People, Affirmative Action is Dying, Here's What You Need to Do. So we're going to be talking about that. That we'll give, interesting. Yeah, and so this video deals with the uh, unequal opportunity race, and that's what it was called, and uh, that's what we're dealing with more so on our season two. This is our weekend edition that we've been doing with our AMP TV Now News so that we can get in depth into different issues, and we thought this would be perfect for Black History Month, being that this particular topic was celebrated during Black mm -hmm. History Month, and there's a firestorm. So we want to give everyone the background, the right. details. So that's what our part one and part two uh, series is dealing with. And so when we look at the, just giving people a, a reference to this particular article that is in the WashingtonPost.com, it's also in the Griot.com, it's also in the Root.com, so you can even, whether it doesn't matter if you go to African American News Source or not, this story, even though this video is about Six years old? Hmm. It's yes. about six or seven years old, or maybe a little bit older, but it was uh, the fact that the African American Policy Forum put it together to be able to educate elementary, high school, and collegiate students, and being able to help them understand what discrimination does in a society and how it really affects African Americans from the African American perspective. And so we're going to be talking more about the story behind it. And I guess you can put your input, Linus. I'll, I'll allow you to do that. When? Right now? In a minute, after this break. <laughs> so you are watching AMP TV Now News. Right after this break, we're going to get in depth into this particular story. So stay tuned.
credit card debt. The debt suckers, high rate and high pay are everywhere. Ooh, they're making another minimum payment. Great. Most of the money goes to us. We'll suck the life out of them. Because your credit card rates are so high, you can't get rid of the debt suckers alone. Their minimum payments are in vain. No, that's juicy. But one call to Consolidated Credit can get the debt suckers off your neck. Thank you for calling Consolidated Credit. Oh, no. They lower his rates. And consolidate his bills into one low payment. He'd pay off his debt in no time. Consolidated Credit drives us batty. Call Consolidated Credit now. Call now and get your life back. Oh, because debt sucks. Call now. Call Consolidated Credit at 1-800-290-3129. 1-800-290-3129. That's 1-800-290-3129. Call now. Warning, if you've been prescribed blood thinning medication, please pay attention. If you or a loved one took Pradaxa or Xarelto and were hospitalized for internal bleeding, gastrointestinal bleeding, or brain hemorrhaging, or your loved one died, the manufacturers may be to blame. Call the Rely On Group right now to see if you may qualify for substantial compensation and medical expenses. If you or a loved one suffered internal bleeding after taking Pradaxa or Xarelto, call the Rely On Group at 800-219-4517. TV Now News. We are on our season two where we are doing our weekend edition. And the reason that we like this weekend edition is because we're really able to break down those key stories that are, have been in the news or are hitting the news. And we like to give you all those sources from African American perspective and also from all sources so that you're able to do your background information. The particular article that we're talking about today has to do with the video that came out. And this video was shown at a high school. And so a Virginia school district has banned the use of this educational video. And it's about racial inequality. And after some parents complained about it, they thought that the messaging was too divisive. Well, when I saw it, you got to look at it in great detail. You looked at the numbers, and I like how they emulate a, a track field to show ra a race in races. And they show uh, two... Well, you're giving it away. Shouldn't we just show them the video? I want to talk about it first. I'm not, not joking. Just go, yeah. Let's, Let, let's watch the video, and we're going to come back with that commentary.
we got a chance to watch that video. It's about four minutes and 10 seconds. And the messaging, now you can talk about the messaging that you saw in that particular video. Well, if you really notice, it's demonstrating in a track field, and it's a race. Right. Um, you have uh, African-American female and mm -hmm. male, and uh, a white male and female. Mm -hmm. And they start off first. And then, then you see that the, the, after the guns start, cow, mm -hmm. right around the time slavery began. Mm -hmm. That's what the clock is, so that's people the understand clock, the clock yeah, that's, that's going. The represent is the time period of slavery as they go into the 1400s mm -hmm. and the 15, and everything. And as they go on around the, and lapping, you know, and the, the white couple or the white person, a male they started off mm -hmm. with, is getting old. They show the baton that represent money is being passed on. And it's a heavier baton. It keeps yeah. getting bigger. And, and it gets passed on to the next generation. While we are still, our African-American couples are still stuck at the, the starting line. They haven't even took off. They I have. don't think it showed couples. You said couples. You mean well, uh, the, the people, two, the, the two runners? The African-American runners, okay. basically. I'm right. saying the two African-American runners are still stuck at the starting line. They haven't even moved the inch as they lap over in generations. In fact, hundreds of years has passed on and there is no progress mm -hmm. with the African American. And leadership. they show all the different obstacles. So let's give some more background though about this particular video because the, it's interesting how this created outrage. By the way, one of our former correspondents, Jacoya Murphy, she uh, informed me this morning that this incident or where this took place at the high school is about 15 minutes away from her. It's about 14 miles, 10 minutes away, 14 miles away. And so there's this big division going on within the community there in Virginia. That's where this is all taking place at. And so the video, I want to make sure people understand why the staffing felt it was important to be able to show this video is because it was just in October at a football game. The school was playing an all-black team, and they were playing loudly over the airwaves a song that had 13 different racial epithets in it. Mm. No one said anything about it, but the staffing heard it, and the predominantly white team didn't have a problem with it. So it's interesting what's culturally sensitive and what isn't. Well, when, you, when you're looking at it and, and they hearing the sensitivity part about it, it's one thing. But when I'm going back to the, the track thing, to, to see and have an understanding why African American is not performing mm -hmm. on a nationwide basis compared to other nationalities, and we see the difference between Asian, Hispanic, um, and white in this particular uh, video, we're looking at all the different obstacles. Um, they, they mentioned in their discrimination. They mentioned in their, um, their what is the, the housing uh, disparities so, or segregation. So it's, it's um, a, a, to me, a well depiction of what is really going on. So after the break, we're also going to talk a little bit more about affirmative action, the purpose of it, and also more background on the story. You're watching AMP TV Now News. We will be right back. Stay tuned. The debt suckers, high rate and high pay are everywhere. Ooh, they're making another minimum payment. Great. 
most of the money goes to us. We'll suck the life out of them. Because your credit card rates are so high, you can't get rid of the debt suckers alone. Their minimum payments are in vain. Oh, that's juicy. But one call to Consolidated Credit can get the debt suckers off your neck. Thank you for calling Consolidated Credit. Oh, no. They lower his rates. And consolidate his bills into one low payment. He'll pay off his debt in no time. Consolidated Credit drives us batty. Call Consolidated Credit now. Call now and get your life back. Oh, because debt sucks. Call now. Call Consolidated Credit at 1-800-290-3129. 1-800-290-3129. That's 1-800-290-3129. Call now. Warning. If you've been prescribed blood thinning medication, please pay attention. If you or a loved one took Pradaxa or Xarelto and were hospitalized for internal bleeding, gastrointestinal bleeding, or brain hemorrhaging, or your loved one died, the manufacturers may be to blame. Call the Rely On Group right now to see if you may qualify for substantial compensation and medical expenses. If you or a loved one suffered internal bleeding after taking Pradaxa or Xarelto, call the Rely On Group at 800-219-4517. And welcome back to AMP TV Now News. We are in our season two where we really delve into the stories that matter the most or that are trending in African American communities. Now this particular story is from the Washington Post and you can find it at WashingtonPost.com. And we are referring to the video that people are upset about, particularly white parents who felt that this particular video that was shown during an assembly at, during Black History Month. And it was supposed to give sensitivity to the students who are non-black and helping them to understand from an African-American perspective what it's like living here in the United States and being able to see the disparity, the racial disparity here in the U.S. And this is based on the staff. They felt they made a, a good decision. And the owner of the co-founder of the African-American Policy Forum, he's associate professor of political science at Vassar College, felt that they really produced something that was available for elementary, high school, and collegiate students to encompass all of the racism that has happened here in the United States. So you were describing the video, and you felt that it was a, a great depiction of some of those disparities that have happened within the United States. Now, do you think this is a video for elementary level, however? For elementary, yes, in a sense, yes. I think they should have an understanding at an early age of what African Americans, in particular, go through. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's not something that is rated PG, rated X, or you know, or rated R, mm -hmm. or it's showing anything that's violent, but it actually shows, uh, in particular for the African American youth, they should have an understanding of what, of the history and what is about to possibly happen. So they can not be in the dark about things right now. So we know that in 2016, uh, those who have not witnessed or had to go through any of those racial disparities maybe would not have an understanding of affirmative action. Mm -hmm. So when we look at this particular video, it helps to really detail and give us a better understanding. So if we look at 1972, as far as the, you, we look at different EOCs in these different cities, people probably do not understand why those organizations exist in the first place. But in 1972, the equal Employment Opportunity Act was passed, laying the groundwork for affirmative action. And what EOC, just like we have an EOC here, a Fresno EOC, was supposed to do was be able to provide access for African Americans is where it started, because that's who was disenfranchised and that's what it was created for. Uh, being able to give them a, a way to fairly be in the corporate structure, be a part of that corporate structure. So in 1961, we had President Kennedy that issued the executive order of the 10925, created the Committee on Equal Employment Opportunity and mandated the federally funded projects, the affirmative action, to ensure that hiring and employment practices were free of racial bias. That was the, when we look at the groundwork. Now, Dr. Claude Anderson of Powernomics really breaks it down because he was a part of that clause in 1972 when it was really supposed to be directed towards African Americans. Now, what they found was that there were other ethnic groups that were also being disenfranchised. Ironically, people may not know that even Mexicans who were counted as whites from 1930 to 1970, then it was re they were re entered in the census as Hispanic origin. So then they were able to lump all those different cultures who they felt were being dis 
discriminated against throughout the United States, and then hence in 1972, that was supposed to apply to all disenfranchised races within the United States. So that's giving people a background, giving you the that information. Very informative. About I'm trying to give it. really into it in very... Uh, Those are just facts. small pebbles. Those <laughs> are just small bullet points I wanted people to understand. Yes. Uh, and so when you're looking at this, and a student isn't going to understand what happened in 1961, what happened in 1964, the Civil Rights Act, and or what happened start, in 1972. That's when, that's when they began to start that race and notice. No, 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 it went back. It went back like 1492. No, no, the 1492 it went away. Um, two couples went. Okay. But when the African Americans went, had a green light mm -hmm. to go forward, it was still it was in nineteen. <laughs> it was in 1964. It was in 1964. That would be the Civil Rights Act. Okay. Exactly. Around okay. that time, that's when they finally got a, a, a start, <laughs> and, and have a lot of obstacles in between this. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. notice that they never finished. So what are some of these parents saying? This is in the Henrico County Public School uh, District, and this is about 14 miles out of Richmond, Virginia. And looking at what are these parents that are upset about, they just feel that it was not a video that they wanted to show to the children. And so I know on our radio show locally, we really talked about this story in depth, and we discussed about those rose-colored glasses and that there's two Americas, essentially. And so it's interesting. There's two sides of this, because I'm really interested, interested to talk about in our next episode what Dr. Boyce Watkins has to say, dear black people, affirmative action is dying. Here's what you need to do. So it's really I want to really break that down, because at least we're looking in a solution mode versus that victim mode. However, the video is crucial to helping the collegiate experience as well to understand and be able to have discussion about all these aspects that were in the, the video was so deep. There's so much There's to so it. There's so much to There's it. There's so much information. In that four minute clip, they went into. Four minutes and 10 seconds. Okay, four minutes and 10 seconds. They went into mm -hmm. um, discrimination as the rain. It was when they first was getting started, then here come a cloud and the rain hit. <laughs> yeah. And then when they get through the rain, then they have rocks on there. They're mm -hmm. falling and slipping on the rocks. Yeah. And then the guy fell into the pond. And that was looking at tests, uh, standardized testing mm -hmm. for that. So we are being, we have to compete on the same level as as our uh, white counterparts in a race that we never was. There wasn't a fair race. So the purpose of the video was to be able to challenge America in general to look at its history and to not deflect but actually reflect and look at the deeper inner workings of racism and what it has caused and the end result. Everything has a cause and effect. So what, however, African Americans have to do is not internalize that, understand it, not project the emotions of it, but be able to not only reflect, not only deflect, but then, and not be reactionary and, and be more so into how do I, what's my next step? Since I know this is not working for me, we can't keep waiting for people in America to see our way as a put, or we can't keep waiting to get that 40 acres and mule. You have to go out there and get that. You have to be able to look at the programs that exist for you where there are, there are plenty of grants. There are USDA grants we were talking about mm -hmm. that where we live, as far as it being a big agricultural industry, 6.2 billion just in our county alone, how can you be a part of that? How can you get a piece of that? So we have to begin to think outside the box and not be that victim, because it's so easy to do. However, these are great study guides and great study aids, I feel, to be able to educate the masses, educate the generation that is behind us that will have no clue whatever happened and whatever that race was about. I remember you, you said something about this being appropriate for elementary. I would, me being a teacher for over 15 years, I was thinking as a, um, a father and a, um, and a teacher, I would gladly give this to an elementary sc school so they can kind of have an understanding early. They might not yeah. really understand the history. But it has key words and it, it shows that. They won't the understand it. It, history. Right. They, they'll identify with the rain. They'll identify with the rocks. They identify with the man falling in a puddle, and and but th it would give um, a a reflection or uh, a thought mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of okay when they reading f further what has progressed. So one of the comments that the uh, uh, Caucasian parents state is they are sitting there watching a video that is dividing them up from a racial standpoint. 
Blake told the station, this is Don Blake, who's a granddaughter who attended the Glen Allen High School Assembly. It's a white guilt kind of video. I think somebody should be held accountable for this. Well, I think America should be held accountable, however, for the years and years of racism that in the Jim Crow laws, and this is America being accountable by being able to talk about these uncomfortable issues. Well, not only Jim Crow laws, the mass, mass incarceration that is now Which was depicted in the video as well. Yeah, presently here, as they call the new Jim Crow laws mm -hmm. now. So it, it was depict, depicted in the video. Yeah. And we can see that um, there is um, a, not a, um, a, a road to success. Well, I know that there has to be discussion because when I'm, I looked at all the comments, which I'm not going to read on the air, after the article, and I'm looking at some of the ignorant comments that are being said about affirmative action, about the IQs of African Americans, there has to be some discussion, folks. Not enough time in this program to talk about it. That's why we're going to have a part two. But... It's disconcerting to look at the comments that people are saying when they're talking about IQs relative to African Americans versus whites and how whites have a better IQ. We're still talking about that in 2016. That presents a problem, wouldn't you say? Yes, it would. So that's why we got more to say in part two. So we thank you for watching this edition of AMP TV Now News. This has been our weekend special. Stay tuned for part two next week. Have a great week. debt. The debt suckers, high rate and high pay are everywhere. Oh, they're making another minimum payment. Great. Most of the money goes to us. We'll suck the life out of them. Because your credit card rates are so high, you can't get rid of the debt suckers alone. Their minimum payments are in vain. No, that's juicy. But one call to Consolidated Credit can get the debt suckers off your neck. Thank you for calling Consolidated Credit. Oh no, they lower his rates. And consolidate his bills into one low payment. He'll pay off his debt in no time. Consolidated credit drives us batty. Call Consolidated Credit now. Call now and get your life back. Oh, because debt sucks. Call now. Call Consolidated Credit at 1-800-290-3129. 1-800-290-3129. That's 1-800-290-3129. Call now. Warning. If you've been prescribed blood thinning medication, please pay attention. If you or a loved one took Pradaxa or Xarelto and were hospitalized for internal bleeding, gastrointestinal bleeding, or brain hemorrhaging, or your loved one died, the manufacturers may be to blame. Call the Rely On Group right now to see if you may qualify for substantial compensation and medical expenses. If you or a loved one suffered internal bleeding after taking Pradaxa or Xarelto, call the Rely On Group at 800-219-4517. edition of AMP TV Now News. And we're so glad you joined us on our AMP TV Now News 
weekend edition and where we like to talk about key topics and issues that are happening within the African diaspora nationwide, trending topics that seem to be affecting everyone. And one of those conversations that we've been continuing on or finishing up with is our part due dealing with Black History Month and we're specifically talking about part one, mm -hmm. affirmative action. And and today's topic is going to be geared around part two, where Dr. Boyce Watkins from Financial Juneteenth, he's also a professor, uh, he has the, the Black Wealth, uh, different online seminars that he has and classes, and he's got a lot of knowledge. But dear black people, you know, and that, uh, that was his comment. Here's his feelings on affirmative action. So we will be discussing parts of that video, having some commentary on that in regards to looking at our part two on affirmative action. Meanwhile, there are some uh, key news items that we see are prevalent when it comes to talking about what's going on in the nation when it comes to the conversation of race. Interestingly enough, some of those news items included at the uh, Academy Awards, mm -hmm. at the Oscars, where Chris Rock was a host. Ironically, he came out on Public Enemy. Mm -hmm. Are you familiar with Public Enemy, Fighting yes, the Power? Yes, I was raised by Public Enemy and, and Fighting the Power. And it was shocking to see that um, song being played at the, towards the end or at the end of the Oscars. Especially when it was banned on a lot of radio stations back in the 90s, at least when we were growing up. So it was ironic that he came in on that song and left on that song. I wonder if it was because it was Chris Rock and he's a comedian that he was able to get away with that, you think? Well, no, I don't think it was able. I think they're trying to um, show humor and what was going on mm. in the African American community and make light of it. Mm. And that, again, I guess that's why they had Stacey Dash, who is vehemently against having any celebration of Black History Month. Ironically, she actually supported President Barack Obama in the first term. Sometimes people do things to rejuvenate their career. That could be the case. Uh, it wasn't until the, the next time around that she was supporting Mitt Romney. And maybe that is a way to boost a career. More power to her if that's the way she wants to be. But I don't know about discrediting black history. On it's, a heavy it's, topic. It's, it's a heavy topic and to come out there um, and been broadcast all over about her views on uh, Black History Month, there should not be During one. The Oscars, and then she come out with the Oscar. Now the question is how much she was paid for that? Who cares? Statement. I'm looking at more so you know what? It's good that all of the <clears throat> audience felt uncomfortable when mm -hmm. she did that. So that shows how ridiculous she must have looked and felt after kind of giggling about that she's the head of the committee or whatever it was that she said in reference to black history and happy Black History Month to, you know, to all the black people. I thought that was a disgrace. And, I, you know, I was pretty much uh, disgusted with that and, and, you know, I felt offended by that. Well, not only the people in the audience. Can you imagine the people that's broadcast to millions of people all over the yeah. nation, maybe in, all over the it's world? Like that uncomfortable so that, that it just, it was very uncomfortable for and her to do that. And I don't think she felt comfortable yeah. doing it. Well, she so. felt comfortable enough to get a paycheck. But we know that there were a lot of news sources that vehemently talked about how that was just inappropriate all the way together, all the way around. Yeah. And so those are discussions on race when we, that Chris Rock was able to bring to the forefront through, not necessarily, well, through his jokes, through being a comedian, he could get away with it. He was able to talk about both sides, and I thought that he did that very eloquently. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like I said, he came out on Public Enemy, and ironically, it ended with Public Enemy Fight the Power, but they, they wanted to cause controversy. That's why we're talking about it right now. Right. So it caused controversy. They know Stacey Dash in that statement would cause controversy. And, and they wanted to have an impression and leave with some kind of impression. Maybe not the correct impression, um, but they wanted to have that. Okay, so after the break, let's finish up with the other news stories with the three young ladies uh, from the University of Albany. You are watching AMP TV Now News, our weekend edition. We'll be right back.
have credit card debt. The debt suckers, high rate and high pay are everywhere. Ooh, they're making another minimum payment. Great. Most of the money goes to us. We'll suck the life out of them. Because your credit card rates are so high, you can't get rid of the debt suckers alone. Their minimum payments are in vain. No, that's juicy. But one call to Consolidated Credit can get the debt suckers off your neck. Thank you for calling Consolidated Credit. Oh, no. They lower his rates. And consolidate his bills into one low payment. He'll pay off his debt in no time. Consolidated Credit drives us batty. Call Consolidated Credit now. Call now and get your life back. Oh, because debt sucks. Call now. Call Consolidated Credit at 1-800-290-3129. 1-800-290-3129. That's 1-800-290-3129. Call now. Warning. If you've been prescribed blood thinning medication, please pay attention. If you or a loved one took Pradaxa or Xarelto and were hospitalized for internal bleeding, gastrointestinal bleeding, or brain hemorrhaging, or your loved one died, the manufacturers may be to blame. Call the Rely On Group right now to see if you may qualify for substantial compensation and medical expenses. If you or a loved one suffered internal bleeding after taking Pradaxa or Xarelto, call the Rely On Group at 800-219-4517. affirmative action and the video that we'll be playing excerpts of and having some commentary about has to do with Dr. Boyce Watkins from Financial Juneteenth. Dear black people, here are his thoughts on affirmative action and so and so and so and so. And we were just finishing up our thoughts about some of those national news items and comments that we had about those top national news items. And one other news item had to do with the Albany, looking at uh, what happened with the three uh, young ladies who attend the University of Albany at Albany, and they were, there was an incident January 30th on the CDTA bus, and so it's being investigated. Now, the university president, Robert Jones, did come out and speak out about it to support the students who... Mm -hmm reported on the 911 call that they were being discriminated against and violated, racially violated. Now, on, now the video shows a different story. Mm -hmm. And those are those conversations we have to have about race. We know that something happened on that bus. And we know that someone was violated. However, witnesses are saying that the, one of the three uh, young university uh, black ladies were the ones to throw the first hit. As we're talking about physical hit. Doesn't make it right as far as the racial slurs that were that were spewed out, and we'll have to find more information as time goes on. But the video is definitely showing a different story. One thing about videos, like you said earlier, videos don't lie. If they investigate and they see who throws the first punch, that may not be the that may be the physical education of that. But we don't know what words or what uh, entice that that reaction. Mm -hmm. So we have to go, I know they have to investigate more and see what was said, why uh, action from a reaction was done. So we'll have to find, and luckily there is more discussion about <clears throat> race and ethics when we're talking about on a university campus, there has to be mm -hmm. that discussion. And you would think that the millennials and the young people in this day and age do not have to deal with these issues, obviously so, because we're still, even if you look at Blackish, which is a show on ABC, ABC channel, um, you look at the um, different actors that had to address the um, 
L.A., the, the young teen, again, or wasn't a teen, I believe he was a, a young black man that was shot down and he was unarmed or didn't have the mental capacity. And so they actually did a whole episode, even though it's usually a very comedic show, how to respond when a cop addresses you. And it was specifically talking about uh, black boys and boy, I'll, I'll say black teens, what they should say and what they can do or what they should do, what they shouldn't do, and the violations of that. So that was a very powerful episode to see Blackish, which is a, usually a very comedic show, and you can have Diana um, Ross's daughter mm -hmm. that plays yes. them, one of the key roles and played the mother, and she was playing both sides. But to see the kids also affected by that, it shows that there does, there does need to be more discussion about race in our country. So, speaking of that, it, it brings us to our part two, talking about affirmative action, and part two of our Black History series as we close out this chapter, and we discussed affirmative action as far as its original intentions in 1972, where it was in relations to make the playing, it was supposed to make the... Uh, the playing field, playing field level yeah. and fair for all, but that's a myth. It actually specifically started out with African Americans, mm -hmm. and even at that time, when you look at Mexican Americans and Hispanics, they were labeled as white. It didn't change until that mm -hmm. whole affirmative action clause. So, although it was geared towards African Americans in 1972 when it was first drafted, it seemed to be more equal, or it, it, was, it was soon coined to represent all disenfranchised people of color um, that needed to have those same opportunities that were being shut out. In the well, they, they, they look at it as uh, minority. Mm -hmm. So the Hispanic fed, fit into the minority. Um, I think some women fit into yes, the minority. Fit, yeah. um, the Indians fit into the minority. And some um, even and Southeast yeah. Asians, mm -hmm. I said yeah, Native Americans fit into that minority. So that pie was cut and sliced and divvy up in a way that was not originally geared to affect that particular niche audience or group that it was uh, made for. And so the question is, today is affirmative action still <clears throat> something that is viable today that's needed? Well, we're still having conversations about race. I have yes. to bring that up. That's not doesn't seem to be going anywhere anytime soon. And we still are having those challenges in the workplace, uh, even where we live, and we're in California, people think mm -hmm. it's a very liberal state, but you'd be surprised there are some very conservative cities, and we live in one of those very conservative cities. And so it tells us a lot about race. We just saw in Anaheim in California, mm -hmm. again, California, where you had a Ku Klux Klan rally in a neighborhood that is predominantly uh, ethnic people that are in that neighborhood. And that's pretty bold, I have to say. <laughs> well, they, they experienced some of the um, boldness of that it's area it. and, and experienced um, the anger and animosity mm -hmm. um, towards that. Sure they did. And they didn't have to wear the white robes or the white hoods to show that. And I'm sure they wanted to portray that white lives matter, but might be smarter. I don't smarter. think they're going to come back uh, Yeah, they probably soon. shouldn't. Get, you have to really know what neighborhood you're going to, because it is 2016. As much as people want to express their feelings on a topic, make sure you know where you're going before you just uh, the pop minds, up in a neighborhood. Or uh, the mindset of how that environment is, especially with the movement of the Black Lives Matter and the stuff that's going right. on in this nation. So it tells us in America we still have a lot to work on. We can't have these rose-colored glasses on because in actuality there are some challenges of equity when it comes to the workplace, when it comes to being business owners. Uh, we know that in trying to get loans. Uh, we've known that just as business people in general. Well, we study the data, the birth rate of, oh, yeah. of the African American. Um, March of um, Dimes did it. It, it just, it's just so many different areas where our numbers are very low as far as in school, in math, in science, mm -hmm. and, and so on and so forth, to where, you know, it, it created this frustrational mm -hmm. bubble that is busting in a lot of the communities of, throughout the nation. So Dr. Boyce Watkins has an interesting <coughs> take on all of this, and we'll recap on it and then be able to show parts of excerpts of that video and have some short commentary on it. And his interesting take is, well, again, let's, let's just show an excerpt of that. Basically, you're going to see the clock consistently roll back politically 
um, in terms of affirmative action and voting rights. Those are two things that are going to be kind of whittled away for African Americans. Now, here's the reason why uh, the majority of black people are really not going to mobilize and fight back against this. Uh, black people, we're, we're just learning how to fight. We haven't always been fighters. We haven't always been organized. We haven't always been able to really channel our money and our resources in a way that are going to get things done. We're also not always as politically aware as we should be. Uh, for example, during the last several years when we had a black president, we most black people were resistant to the idea of fighting for significant political change that affected black people and their families. You had some people that are advanced and progressive and enlightened, and, and they would understand that you could challenge a politician without hating him, right? But other people felt that if you love Obama, you worship, you basically worship him and you do what he says and you don't question it. And if you question it, then you must be trying to attack him and you must be a hater, right? That's kind of what we got, right? Those extremes. And so what happened is we missed an opportunity. So the Democrats are going to come back and they're going to try to get your vote by basically telling you how racist the Republicans are. And if Donald Trump becomes president, it's going to be in the end of the world and that we're going to protect it with the best thing we got, which means basically we're the better pimp. So after the break, we're going to talk more about the excerpt that you just watched from um, Dr. Boyce Watkins, Dear Black People, you're watching AMPTV Now News, our weekend edition. We'll be right back. affirmative action as far as what it was supposed to do and and the challenges that African Americans were up to and I know we couldn't show the entire nine minute video mm -hmm. but he also talked about integration being a factor in spreading out African Americans across the diaspora which then spread out the collective collaborative power of African Americans in general so as a result because they became minorities in the communities that they spread out to you essentially had to have affirmative action to be able to level that playing field like what you talk about. Mm -hmm. One thing he also mentioned too with integration um, um, we, we, we don't have the kind of collective force basically the, back when segregation we was forced to patronize black businesses. Mm -hmm. Now that, op that, that is not the that case. That opportunity is spread out. It's spread out. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's why a lot of the African American businesses are not um, being successful because there is not, that, there, that's there not was why no, not guarantee, being successful, no the, the guarantee base is not. Okay, there. so that just means that model doesn't work anymore. So now that we're integrated, you can't use that model that is just where your business is just geared towards African Americans. We've had that discussion mm -hmm. when it comes to business. That means your product has to be more of a, that, that uh, will, can be given to the masses. Your services and your products have to be geared towards a, uh, a, a crowd. So we have an example of a restaurant here that is black owned and the difference is they want to change their black owned restaurant from that reputation of mm -hmm. African Americans coming in there, so they just happen to show all Caucasian people 
in the commercial. I don't think that's smart either. I think you have to diversify by showing everyone or finding a uh, signature food or item that's not served anywhere else and diversifying that way and still keeping your your cultural identity. Well, the cultural identity was frowned frown on them because they supported them. They was there and when they saw... African Americans supported them? Yes, African Americans. So when they saw the commercials of other people that they know is not there, they felt... Um, they felt slighted. I, they felt ousted, mm -hmm. basically. Slighted and ousted. So let's watch another excerpt from Dr. Boyce Watkins. Let's take a look. Uh, whether Democrats or Republicans are in office is not going to really change the lives, the lives of black people all that much. Um, we've seen both of them. They've all had multiple chances. Neither party has really done very much for black people. Also, one of the things that we learned about integration is that integration wasn't always the best thing for black people. Even though we needed desegregation, the integration, what it did was it sucked us in and watered us down and spread us out. And it was basically a huge amount of divide and conquer. Because so all these political gains that we picked up during the civil rights movement and all that stuff, that stuff can be chopped up and rolled back any time our host decides they're not going to give that to us anymore. So as we move into the next 50 years, we have to pick a more stable solution. The stable solution is not affirmative action. The stable solution is not based on politics. Uh, politics plays a part, but politics is not the final solution. The final solution, really, a lot of it lies in wealth and also how we educate each other and how we educate our children and how we educate our community. Uh, two things black people have to do. Number one, we have to educate our own kids. Number two, we have to learn how to make our own money. And in fact, when you educate your kids, you first thing you educate them on is you educate them on how to make their own money. Uh, and so basically, um, if you look at it like that, what the uh, what we're kind of looking at is a situation where in 15 years, your child might not be able to get into the University of Texas. Well, where are they going to go to get an education? Now, they could go to another university, a, a different type of school or whatever that's more receptive. That's fine. But understand what education typically gives people when it comes to getting jobs. Most black people go to college to get a job. And to get that job, you get that certificate, that piece of paper, which is like an admission ticket into the economic system. Well, the economic system ultimately marginalizes uh, and at the very best exploits black people by basically uh, giving us jobs where we're severely underpaid, mistreated. Uh, most of us don't, many of us don't get the jobs that we want. Black males especially get kind of pushed out of the system. So effectively what's happening is you're spending $100,000 getting a ticket for admission into a system that doesn't even want you, right? That, that, that it was built for somebody else. Um, that's not really designed for you. And you have to really think about this system as you decide to enter into it and how you're going to negotiate that and how you're going to train your kids to prepare for that. Um, me personally, if I'm raising a son or a daughter right now, here's what I do. I talk to my child about possibly going to college. College ain't that bad. College isn't horrible. I don't, I'm not against college as long as it's reasonably priced. So if they can't get a scholarship to a nice university, then guess what? We're going to a state school so we don't spend a whole lot of money. And that's only if you're choosing a field where you need a college degree in order to compete in that field. But even then, if the field does not have jobs available, you must question whether or not it makes sense to spend forty, fifty, sixty, seventy, eighty thousand dollars, much of which will be debt, to get that certificate for that field if the job will not be available. The other alternative I would throw at my child, and this would be just as good in my mind, probably better, is I would say, well, why don't you spend three years just studying entrepreneurship intensely? You know, do things. You can do the Black Wealth Boot Camp if you want, but you can also do other programs out here. Do something where for three years your child is doing nothing but learning how to build businesses, how to be a serial entrepreneur, how to create their own jobs, how to make their own money. I guarantee you this much, two things with a child like that. Number one, he will be thoroughly educated, probably better than most college students, because lots of college students go to college and they spend most of the time partying and chilling with their friends and all that. You can learn just as much outside of a university as you can inside the university. Much of the information is available online. Harvard University lectures are available online. Stanford University lectures are available online. So when people act like it's insane for you to just buck the system and create your own opportunities, well, they need to take a history lesson because their people survive like this for thousands of years this whole corporation thing hasn't been around that long so just realize you have options that's the key and when you talk about overcoming the racism from the supreme court and the affirmative action issue and all that create your own affirmative action that is more powerful one that delivers on a much higher level and one that is controlled by us so create your own damn affirmative action program. Stop begging white people for everything. They're getting tired of it. I'm getting tired of it, too. It's time for us to build something of our own. Don't get me wrong. We know what white people did. So we just got a chance to watch another excerpt of Dr. Boyce Watkins. And interesting enough, he talks about not necessarily buying into the university system, but having your child have three years of entrepreneurship. 
understanding business that way? Well, you, you, you want them to go into more or less ownership, mm -hmm. having a, um, a knowledge of how to make money mm -hmm. instead of depending on a system to do for you that is not built to do for mm -hmm. that, that particular audience, that particular group. Mm -hmm. So he um, also, he, he let his frustration get the best of him and said, you know, um, stop begging. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, he used a white man for yeah, we're something. Tired of you begging, so you stop begging. Yeah, you know, he stop begging, and he's tired of people begging uh -huh. when when you can have something of your own and do more for yourself. Create your own affirmative action, and he's not talking about create your own affirmative action program. He's saying be able to use your business as that affirmative action if need be or your service or whatever it is that you do and create opportunities for people in your community that normally wouldn't get hired mm -hmm. so we know of some i think you ran into one of a young a young person that was going to the local colleges out here and he was having a difficult time getting hired anywhere else because he didn't have you know the background or didn't have the inside knowledge to talk to different individuals to get that job but you were able to talk to them because come from the same city same mm -hmm. background and you said okay well, we're going to give you a call so that makes it different that is creating your own affirmative action that's creating your own affirmative action because mm -hmm. now you can relate to that person you can have compassion for that person and you can um, see the potential within that person to better your business and also enhance his future. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a win-win situation for, on both ends. So we thought we'd at least end with that powerful note, looking at our ending our uh, Black History Month, uh, the different parts we have. We talked about Dr. Carter G. Woodson mm -hmm. and his background. We got to uh, talk about a number of things when it comes to black history and as a business, how you can thrive. And now it's about, okay, you're in the corporate world. Maybe you're not a business owner, but you are in the corporate structure, how can you work that differently? How can you retrain yourself? Does it mean going to a trade school, learning a trade, learning something that is more, is different? Let's say you're getting laid off. We know of a young gentleman that was recently laid off. And so you have to choose a skill that you want to delve into and learn from a business that owner that's around you or in your area that you might have to do internship and all those things, and we've talked about that. So we hope you enjoyed this weekend edition of AMP TV 9 Any quick final thoughts you wanted to say? Be prosperous. <laughs> yes, I guess that'll be our Facebook thought for this week. Have a great week. 